Hello everyone, I'm Shubh and you're watching F1 Error Nemesis. For those of you who are new to my channel, a quick background check. I work with the Red Bull Racing team for the 2021 and the 2022 season as a student placement aerodynamicist. And this has given me some insights into the world of F1 aerodynamics. And my objective with this aero analysis series is to give you those insights. So let's dive into it then. In this video, we're going to talk about the Mercedes front wing end plate and the front wing tips. And yes, Mercedes designers and aerodynamicists have been able to find a loophole in the regulations again, because last year, the FIA introduced new regulations in this section to specifically outlaw this. Remember that Mercedes had a very unique uh, front wing tip as compared to anybody else on the grid, and this was supposed to be outlawed, but somehow Mercedes have been able to still have like pointy uh, tips or uh, like sharp tips as compared to the rest of the grid which have a very smooth rounded tip that is blended into the end plate while Mercedes have some discontinuities present. So what is this? what does this do aerodynamically? Let's try and understand this in this video. Let's get into it then. To understand what the Mercedes front wing tips do, we need to understand something called as the front wheel low wheel wake management also called as squirt management. And what is this exactly? So when you have a tire, uh, you have a contact patch with the tire and the tire has multiple shoulders. So around the shoulder, because the tire touches the ground, uh, the air has to move around the shoulders. There is local separation around the tire shoulders because of the high pressure gradient present around it. And this local separation that is marked in red here is what we call squirt that is tire squirt and it is very important to manage this tire squirt or to minimize this tire squirt because this tire squirt normally lands up ballooning itself as it goes downstream and when it does that it creates this region of low energy air that lands up feeding into the floor and we know that this year's regulations are particularly sensitive to adding low energy air into the floor because the floor produces most of the downforce, all the vortex systems inside the floor becomes lossier or um, have decreased stre strength in case the flow that goes into it to begin with is lossier. So how do we manage this? The previous regulations, what they used to do is we used to have a foot plate around the front wing tip. Some of you who follow Formula One would follow what I'm saying. Uh, you would have a foot plate and the also, the, the design flexibility around the end plate allowed you to have lots of shedding edges, which would also allow you to create like small discrete structures. We also used to use the front wing strakes uh, to produce structures that would try and control the squat. But in essence, what all of these things would do is would they would try and produce vortex that would be placed around here. Let me draw that a bit better. They would all try to create a vortex that would be placed somewhere around here so that you have downwash acting onto the squirt, which minimizes um, the losses that come from it. And the local inwash that's created is slightly away from this so that it does not get drawn. What do I mean by this again? Imagine this vortex is now placed on top here, right? So what would this do? You would get downwash, but you'll have a lot of local inwash down there. So even though the losses are minimized, you have local inwash and whatever losses exist will end up being pulled all the way in boards right so you don't want that so you want this structure to sit almost like diagonally with respect to this point you want it to be strong but you have to gauge how strong you want it to be and that is what cfd allows you to do so um what are the vortex characteristics that we want from this vortex a is the strength you want to be able to control the strength of this vortex because this vortex position and strength will change across different yaw and steer and different attitudes in general. And in some attitudes, your strength can become so high that it might lead to vortex breakdown, for example, or the vortex itself might become lossier in some conditions of, especially with high yaw conditions, right? And you want to be able to control the position of this vortex, especially have like consistency of uh, positioning this vortex as much as possible, even though you cannot have it consistently placed in one place across all conditions, right? And you want to manage the health of this vortex. And it's very important because even if you get a strong vortex in the right position, but it is lossy, 
what lands up happening is as it goes downstream it will end up breaking down and then this losses even though you've minimized the losses from the tire squad itself because the vortex itself is lossy as you go downstream these losses would feel into the floor and have an equivalent effect of in uh, you know just in case if the squad in the first place landed up going into the floor so you need to take care of this preconditions and of course it's tricky of course everything is non linear and we'll try and see how the two end plate designs uh, allow for different uh, characteristics so when you come to the traditional design that most or mostly all the teams have you have a wing that's here and you have the end plate that's here right and you have a smooth transition around the tips and let us look at the strength now the strength of the vortex that would be shared around this edge would depend on the pressure gradient that is you have high pressure here you have low pressure here and this pressure gradient would be the driving factor for the strength of this vortex and remember that this pressure gradient changes highly with yaw because your end plate pressurization changes a lot with yaw correct so again st strength present but highly dependent on yaw now the position of this structure because you do not have a shedding edge like uh, you don't have a wing tip position of this vortex also changes with changing conditions um you cannot say that the that the vortex will be shed from this position or this position it moves around as the change as the condition changes because <clears throat> you don't have a tip for it to be shedding exactly from that point so again you do not have consistency over position especially in yaw and steer you do not have the consistency of position in yaw and steer with this kind of design you have to somehow the position will be the same or that the change in variation of position has a small effect downstream which we know is not true by the way however because it's a well rounded edge Uh, and the gradient of pressures is not very high chances are this would be a very healthy vortex uh, as long as the gradients are a small but again if the gradients are small the strength is low right so let us have a look at the mercedes design so you can see the mercedes tip almost does this and you land up exposing this uh tip to the pressure side of the wing so that is this bit and you can see you have a higher pressure region here and also something really smart that they've done is if you see the curvature of this end plate it is an in washing end plate and of course this curvature of in washing changes across the span of the uh, across the height of the end plate itself but what this does is because it's in washing it would land up creating like a low pressure region here slightly and then you would have an even more low pressure region uh because this is the suction side of the wing so because you have this tip now what you land up creating is vortex like this like that right so a uh, vortex from high pressure region to the low pressure region and that vortex would land up traveling underneath and it would become stronger and stronger as as it lands up going underneath the wing so now in this case you have better manipulation over the strength of your vortex because you can change the delta p across this the delta p across this by changing the curvature of the end plate itself you have possibilities of a much stronger vortex because you have exposed it to the pressure side of the wing which has generally higher pressure much higher pressure than for example in this case so you can get a stronger structure um and then the position of the structure is fixed uh, and you can manipulate the position of this on different tips by changing the height of this so if this is say a bit taller then the structure would move up and if it's a bit lower then the structure would move down so you have the ability because you've changed you fixed the position across this the vortex sheds you can change also the height of the tip um as you go across the different elements to manage the point at which you want to shed this structure so you have much more control over the position and the consistency of this vortex in your end steer now where this concept kind of struggles a bit is the head chances are that because you have a sharper shedding edge and you have large pressure gradients chances are that the structure would slightly be lossy but mercedes have taken care of that too and i'll tell you how if you look at the chord distribution you have a large element 1 a small element 2 small element 3 and small element 4 right so 
they've reduced the chord of element two, three, and four, so as to kind of ensure uh, that there is less loading across this element uh, at the tip, and that would drive that would decrease the pressure gradient around it because you know that the, there's less loading in this in this elements the structure that it produces that's the vortex it produces would be much weaker compared to the vortex from element one so you have an element vortex one you have a weaker element two you have a weaker element three and you have a weaker element four and because element one smoothly transitions into the end plate this structure is clean and strong compared to the rest of these so this structure becomes your dominant structure and these structures would be wrapped around as they move downstream into one single structure and chances are that by the time you reach the tire contact patch you would have one nice structure that is positioned almost diagonally to the contact patch which has high strength has consistency in here um, and is also healthy because the primary structure comes from element one and all the other stru structures add vorticity into this um, and become like secondary structures which get wrapped around into this one structure which is let's say hopefully it's not too lossy and i think this is why mercedes have really really tried to get this concept onto the car that is continuing from last year's car now i have a tricky question for you guys now there's one more vortex that I haven't spoken about and that comes from this edge because this in itself is a free edge, right? And that would have opposite loading because in this case you have high pressure on the inside face and low pressure on the outside face. So this vortex would go down like that. So you would almost have like, um, you know, when this, when in this slice you would have a vortex like this and you would have a vortex on top of it doing that and that vortex can be used to influence the positioning of this vortex so the question for you guys is how do you think it influences the position of the primary vortex which is the vortex around the contact patch and is it useful is it uh, is it bad is it good let me know what you guys think thank you for watching this video Again, I know it's not the cleanest and I'm working on that, but I thought that I have to get this video out so that you guys try and understand why Mercedes designers have worked so hard to put this concept onto this car. Again, if you enjoyed watching this video, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. I'm planning to do this aero analysis series for the rest of the week so that you guys can get more insights into how F1 aerodynamics works. Thank you and have a good one. You're watching F1 Aerodynamicist.